Hello and welcome to City Life. We are so honored to have you for today's broadcast. Our prayer is that the word ministers to your heart and the worship uplifts your spirits. Before we go into the sanctuary, I would like to invite you to be our guest at City Life. We have three dynamic worship experiences every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 12.30 p.m. and our midweek services on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We have something for the entire family. Our children's ministry is over the top, and our middle school and high school ministry is full of life-giving community. Now, as we head into the sanctuary, allow the word to challenge and change your life. Be blessed. Let's go to the word of God very quickly. Somebody say, I'm just getting started. When you realize that salvation is not the end work, but the beginning work of your journey, And you realize that when you are saved and redeemed and Jesus has become your Savior, it's just the beginning of a journey of full life, a journey to God's blessing and promise in your life. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor one more time and say, I'm just getting started. See, that's true whether you've been saved for just a few days or many years, because the Bible says your latter will be greater than your former. The Bible declares that my best and your best is yet to come. Really a greater translation of that would be this, your better is yet to come. Because you never arrive until you get to heaven. Every time I take another step of faith, he says, there's better. Every time I take another step in the journey, he says, there's better. Every time I take another leap of faith, he says, there's greater. So I don't know where you're walking today, but I do know this, the greater is still ahead. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 3, we're just going to journey for just a few moments. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, The Bible says, then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. You have to understand the Jordan River was very important. It was a place of transition. It was a place where the children of Israel crossed into the promise. It was a place where Elijah gave Elisha the mantle for a double portion of anointing. It was a place where Naaman dipped as a leper and his skin was that of a baby. It was always symbolic of transition in the word of God. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all of God's scriptures. We must carry out all that God requires of us. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, or who brings me great joy. Water has always been a marking of transition in the Word of God. I love what Max Licato says. He says, Baptism separates the lookers and the tire kickers from the buyers. Like, anybody just ever walked around a car lot? You really wasn't planning to buy, but you're just looking. There's a difference when somebody's willing to pay the price to acquire the promise. Watchman Nee said this, baptism is faith in action. Baptism is faith in action. We find all through the word of God from Noah to Moses to the children of Israel at the Jordan, as I said, Elijah and Elisha to now Jesus. The heavens respond to the faith of believers. Everything Jesus did was, a, it was an example to us. He didn't have to have the heavens open. He was God in the flesh. He didn't need the affirmation of the Father. He was God in the flesh. He didn't need the Holy Spirit to float over him and cover him in the form of a dove. But here's three things that happened at baptism. The Bible said the heavens opened. The Holy Spirit came down, and the Father began to speak. The heavens opened, the Holy Spirit came down, and the Father began to speak. Jesus said to John the Baptist, I need you to baptize me. Why? Because it is required in Scripture. The Bible says when we are saved and baptized, we will walk in eternal life. This was an outward testimony of an inward work. Here's the thing. If you've not been saved before you walk in baptismal waters, here's what happens. You walk in broken and sinful, 
and all you do is leave a wet sinner. But if you know that Jesus is your Savior, you walk through these baptismal waters testifying old things have been passed away and all things have been made new. You walk in declaring to the world, I'm not what I used to be, but I'm now redeemed and I'm on a collision course with power and destiny. Resurrection was not the end of Jesus' journey. It was the outpouring of his spirit. He said, get ready. I'm about to pour my spirit out on all flesh. And those that are not only baptized in water but baptized by my spirit they will change the world and this is what I'm praying not only over those that are walking through waters but believers that have been in this journey for many years I'm praying that the heavens would open in your life I'm praying that the Holy Spirit would cover you and I'm praying that you would hear a fresh word from the Father for a new season of the journey why because you have pleased the Father you may not have heard that before God is not mad at you. He delights in you. He's not up there just waiting to punish you. He delights in you. I remember growing up in church and, and at times I thought that God was just waiting to zap me the first minute I messed up. I remember walking in a place where you couldn't do right because things were so strict and religious people had made such man-made laws that you could not stay safe. But I find I've got a loving father that says I never remember sin that is covered by the blood old things are passed away and get ready all things are becoming new God delights in you this is what he was saying because you have been obedient son you have pleased my heart because you have done what is required of you the heavens have opened in your life because you have done what I have asked I want you to understand you are being empowered once again by my spirit just what if you left today and God opened the heavens in your life and in in your family just what if the Holy Spirit was poured out fresh and new in your life just what if you got a fresh word from the Father that declared a season that you did not see coming because this is what happened with Jesus the Bible said he left the water he walked into the wilderness now I'm, you have to understand you can't have the water without the wilderness because this is the wilderness that perfects your faith it is the wilderness that tries your faith it is the wilderness that molds your faith and the Bible said he walked out of the water into the wilderness but because he had a word he could look at the enemy and say it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God he could look at the enemy and say God's got a plan and the temptation you bring will not ensnare me and when you understand what happens when he walks out of the wilderness miracles begin to happen supernatural signs and wonders follow Jesus everywhere he went I've got a good word for somebody a miracle's about to chase you down a breakthrough's about to chase you down God's about to target your house with blessing and favor come on if you receive that put your hands together and give him praise I am telling you we have been in a spirit of revival I've had people stop me countless times in the lobby and email us about miracles a, a young lady said pastor I had carpal tunnel so bad I could hardly grip anything but by the end of the service all of a sudden God began to heal my hands and I began to lift them and she said pastor look at this they wanted to do surgery because I couldn't even move my hand and she she had no restriction we had another family write us and say pastor my mother was going in for back surgery and she was watching on Wednesday nights from Indiana and she said pastor she went to work and she just got up one morning after claiming healing in her life and she just got up one morning and the pain was gone she said she was on so many meds and when she got to work because she had been in so much pain one of the ladies came and said do you need a chair she goes no I don't think I need a chair today she said I worked all day then all week people began to ask what happened to your back did you have surgery was there some new medical she said no I was watching a church service down in Florida and I just asked Jesus to heal me and through the airwaves thousands of miles away, the Holy Spirit invaded her living room. I love what Pastor Tony Soros said. He said, celebrate someone else's miracle because it aligned you for the blessing of God for your life. Anybody love Jesus today? Oh, I'm so excited. We're going to pray. This is what we're going to pray. We're going to pray over those that are going to be baptized. We're going to pray over you as believers that a fresh baptism 
What if God just let the water of his word wash you today? Whew. Anybody need that? I know I do. The water of his word just washed you fresh and new. And you left this place and you knew that God was opening the heavens in your life. You knew that the Holy Spirit was freshly empowering you. I, I want you to stand with me. We're going to pray. Then you can be seated if you would like. Here's what I want to ask you today. We have many that are getting ready. We have an army getting ready to come through these waters. But over the last several weeks, we have had hundreds commit their life to Christ. Hundreds. But maybe you say, Pastor, I know I need to be baptized, and I did not come prepared. That's all right. We got you. We came prepared for you. In everything you need to be baptized today. When I say everything, outer garments, undergarments. I won't go into all that. <laughs> the secret places. They are covered. We have everything you need from every size. Why? Because we want to invest in your life. We came prepared for you. So here's what we're going to do. If you want to be baptized today and you are not prepared, there's some gracious MVPs right over here at these double doors. Wave at them right, right over here. There they are. Don't be shy. And they will help you. So in worship, as these are being baptized, if you want to get out of your seat right after I pray or as we begin to worship, they will help you get prepared. And you can leave here today knowing that you have been obedient to the Word of God. Amen? Don't let this day pass you by. Father, I thank you for your presence that is in this room. I thank you for purpose that is in this room. I thank you, Father, that you are moving and you are speaking and you are declaring. I thank you, Father, that in all of our services at this campus, at our East Lake campus, we are going to witness the testimony of people that have declared that you are their Savior, that old things are gone and new things are living. Let the heavens open. Let your spirit fall. Let your voice speak. Father, I pray for those that are in this room that need a fresh washing of the word. Father, wash them today. Let this be a testimony of what you have done in their life. Father, open your heavens in their life. Pour out your spirit and speak. We love you today. We thank you for who you are and what you're doing. And we give you praise. Amen and amen. Would you put your hands together? Now listen. If you want to be baptized and you're out here and you're not over here ready, just go out these double doors and they will hook you up and they will give you all the stuff. Not only will you be baptized, you'll leave with one of these cool shirts and it'll be a marking day in your life. Put your hands together one more time for Jesus today. Come on, let's worship together. The Lord is my light and salvation.
baptism right now. Come on, celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Celebrate the goodness of the Lord.
cool thing is we're going to do this all day long. We're going to do it here. We're going to do it East Lake. And we're going to watch the living testimony of eternal hope revealed. Wow. Heaven's open. Holy Spirit move. We're going to sing this one more time. And I want you to sing it. And then Pastor EJ is going to come and release you today and pray a prayer with you. And just maybe you're going to, you're here today and you say, Pastor, I've not received Christ. It would be a great day for you. He's going to come and lead us in that in just a moment. But we're going to sing this one more time. And I want you to sing it as an anthem today. That he has made something new and beautiful in your life. Are you thankful for Jesus today? Don't leave. Come on, lift your hand. Let's sing this again. And maybe you're standing out there today and you have not yet accepted Christ in your life. You can do that today. And if that's you today and you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus, but you want to make that commitment today, I just want you to simply throw your hand up. Just simply slip your hand up. We're going to say a prayer. We're not going to make you come down and get baptized. But if you want to accept Jesus into your life, just simply slip up your hand. We're going to pray for you. Amen. 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 Church, let's pray this together. Say, Father, today I'm in need of a Savior. And today, God, I'm asking you to come into my life, to forgive me of my sins, and to set me on the path that you created for me. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross and to forgive my sins. Father, thank you for the change that you've done in my life today. And I'll never be the same. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. Our prayer is that it ministered to and challenged your life. If there is anything we can pray with you about or you have a testimony that you would like to share with us, please send us an email at info at citylifechurch.cc. Again, we invite you to be our guest at one of our three Sunday morning worship experiences, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., or 12.30 p.m., and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Also, you can watch our services live on our internet campus by going to citylifechurch.cc or by downloading the City Life app on your smartphones and tablets. It was great having you join us today, and we'll see you next time.